Thanks. Good morning. Welcome to our webinar this morning about gratitude, attitude of gratitude with Karen oh, Wolf. Karen? Yes. Karen? Okay, you got to do start broadcast. I did. Oh, did. there it is. Okay. 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 The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Good morning. Welcome to Attitude of Gratitude. I'm Karen Thompson, the Director of Operations here at Grow and Lead, and Karen Wolf will be our presenter today. Welcome to all of you who are in attending, especially our attendee from Canada. That was really exciting to know that we have someone from Canada attending. So thank you all for being here today. Um, a little bit about Grow and Lead. If you're not familiar with us, our, our mission and our vision is really about creating the UP to be a place where youth can thrive. And we do that by working um, with nonprofits together to build their capacity. Um, and we do that through training and technical assistance um, with a strengths-based uh -huh. approach to youth development incorporated as part of that. Um, we encourage you to consider becoming a member of GLCYD and joining us in our efforts um, to be to help the UP be a great place for kids to grow up. And some of the uh, benefits are listed there on the slide and you can get more information by going to our website and that's listed in the upper right hand corner there of the slide glcyd.org. So I'm going to turn it over to our presenter today, Karen Wolf, who we affectionately call Wolfie here at the office. So here you go, Karen. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I hope to assist you in amping up your gratitude this week of Thanksgiving. I am grateful that I chose this topic a few months back when Victoria was putting together the webinar schedule. As the date approached, so did the irony. I found myself in need of a personal tune-up in this area. I hope that working through the process takes hold and that it has a positive impact on all of us. I always wanted to be a radio disc jockey, so today I'm thankful for all my listeners out there. We have all been hearing a lot about gratitude for quite some time now. Gratitude journals, gratitude challenges, gratitude apps for your phone, how gratitude can impact your life for the better. Gratitude is actually a personality trait, similar to optimism. Some people naturally possess these characteristics, while others may not be so inclined. The good news is that with practice, we can all learn to think differently and change our perspective. My own personality leans more toward the glass half full theory, but cynicism and challenging times can bring out the not so happy and shiny feelings of frustration, sadness, and other negative emotions. And if allowed to take over, the gratitude attitude seems to be lost and I find myself starting from scratch again. Finding the gratitude is easy. There are worksheets, journals, webinars, and tips teaching or reminding us of how to do so. We will take a closer look at some of these here today. We'll also explore how an attitude of gratitude goes a long way towards stewardship of your nonprofit donors. So they say when you find it, you will feel it. Not necessarily and not instantly, mind you, It does require daily practice like many good habits. Those tools I mentioned can be very helpful when you feel you need an attitude alignment or when your heart is feeling heavy and your mind is stressed to its limits. Practice makes perfect and you can get to a point where you are living it in the course of your daily thoughts and observations. Not 100% perhaps, but it's like riding a bike. You don't forget and feeling happy and grateful does feel more comfortable and natural than living with fear, comparison, and envy. 
Okay, I'm hoping you all received the gratitude worksheet that was emailed to you. Uh, if not, these were the cues on it to get you started on finding your gratitude. If you're comfortable with this, I would like to ask you to type a note in the chat box sharing your something silly or who I am answers. Karen, um, if you start seeing some of those appear, would you be so kind as to read them to us? I think it'll help get us all in a grateful mood. I myself am grateful for who I am because I find myself amusing. Some of the things I do just, I don't know, they make me smile. And my something silly I'm grateful for has to be the word poop. Everybody laughs at the word poop. You even laugh, smile when you say it. And I also feel a need to share how grateful I am for my friendship with my coworkers because we spend a lot of time together and we all really care about each other. And working in the nonprofit world has made me feel like I'm always surrounded by friends who are working to make life easier for others. So Karen, has anybody shared anything? I do have one participant who shared um, something silly, my two-year-old telling stories. That's the oh, thing, yeah. Yeah, that brought a smile to my face. Anybody else? Something good this week. I got an important grant application in just at the last minute. Oh, that is very good. That is a, you're sleeping better now. That's it for right now. That's it for now. Well, if we get some more, break in with them because I um, want to know how everybody's feeling out there. And hopefully it's that they're grateful. The benefits of gratitude. An attitude of gratitude can impact all of these areas in our lives. Other health benefits include being sick less often and greater longevity. Emotionally, you will be less anxious. You'll find yourself becoming less materialistic while fine-tuning your spirituality and self-esteem. It can improve your networking and relationship skills, which are never bad things. And this list is just a drop in the bucket. Gratitude can fill that bucket. Thanks to Oprah, Many of us are aware of gratitude journals. And of course, we have apps for everything. Check out welovemojo.com or Gratus, G-R-A-T-U-S, an Android app that sends messages and reminders about counting your blessings. I can't even imagine how many are available, but it's a good thing. My youngest sister, and one of my cousins have been inspiring me throughout the entire month of November. They are doing the Facebook 30 Days of Gratitude Challenge where they post something they are grateful for every day of the month. Many of their posts are, as you would expect, spouse, family, nature, health. But they have both surprised me on occasion with things like football, my friends and enemies, I have learned so much from both. And contrasts, wonderful reminders of things I myself take for granted. And then scrolling through their pages while putting this together, I am filled with gratitude for these young women and how thoughtful they have been in this exercise. It spreads like wildfire when shared. I plan to do it next year. I've put it on my calendar to start thinking about on October 19th the day after the 2018 UP nonprofit conference. Had to get that plug in there. Positive grace is pretty basic. Giving thanks for the things you enjoy and appreciate. It really only involves taking a moment and looking a little closer. The food in front of us, the smile on a loved one's face, even the multitude of choices available in the 21st century. Sometimes I'm just thankful when I can make a decision or choose what to buy for supper. 
I am so grateful to live in the UP. The small population allows for getting to know people better. I learn something from every person I meet along the way. Considering the perspective of others keeps my mind and heart open. Talk to a child or young person whenever you can. It is enlightening. Negative grace is viewing things from the perspective of not having them and feeling grateful for the things that don't happen to you. Sometimes that is what defines how lucky we truly are. Examples, we had a bad storm a few weeks ago and lost some big branches off a of maple. But I'm fortunate because a tree didn't fall on my car like one I saw on a driveway. Or my stepdad died from a head injury sustained in a fall earlier this summer, but I'm thankful he never had to go into a nursing home. A counselor and I were discussing the luck of the draw factor, why bad things happen to more to some than others. She shared her thoughts on the range of emotions gained from surviving tough times, compassion, understanding, empathy, kindness, perspective, truly opportunities for growth. And sensory appreciation involves finding the human condition remarkable. The motion of our legs as we walk across a parking lot, having eyes that see as well as cry, feeling the warmth of the sun while squinting at its brightness, ears that hear music to a brain that remembers the song, to the heart that swells with the memory it evokes, to the tears that well up in our eyes. The wind playing a symphony while the trees dance. Your senses on overload when you are with a child you love, hearing their laughter and feeling their trust. Our senses provide us with a mind, body, soul connection. Yes, we do have reasons to be thankful. So Karen, anybody else share anything? This is a good point. Not at the moment. I'm not seeing anything unless someone wants to type something nope. in real quick. How fast are you people? <laughs> okay, we're going to go into part two where we're going to take our happy, thankful hearts and look at donor appreciation. This isn't a new subject and much has been shared on the best practices for acknowledging those who give us their support through donations. You can and should modify your donation thank you process as you go along. But the most important thing is that you do something to show them how grateful you are. We'll talk about many of the different ways you can do this. It is recommended that donations are acknowledged within 48 hours. A short handwritten note is a good start. You can print out custom note cards with your logo on eight and a half by 11, two on a page, and purchase a box of white invitation envelopes for under 10 bucks. Keep a stack handy, especially right after your appeal goes out. If you wanna add something, you can go to bing.com, click images, filters, then licenses, to find photos and clip art that are free to use. Or you can insert, insert a photo that illustrates the work of your organization. Be creative. If you know the donor, reference something personal, specific to them. If not, be sure to be thoughtful in the message you send. And do make an effort to get to know your donors better. Take notes, remember the details. It will help deepen the connection between you, your mission, and them. Frequency of communication is important as well. It's great to communicate on a regular basis and keep your donors in the loop. New donors present an opportunity. It's only a first time donation once. This is your best opportunity to establish a relationship with them. Treat your donors as friends of yours because ultimately they are. Try to make your messages simple yet emotional, brief, fun, newsy, yet relevant. 
give them credit for their part in the work that has been accomplished. There are lots of great ideas for recognizing donors. Some are more appropriate for certain types of nonprofits than others. First-time donors should receive a welcome package to provide them with more information about you and to strengthen the connection. If your group works with animals or children, you have a photo op that can be inserted onto a card or newsletter, as well as be shared through social media with a shout out to donors. Remember that you need parents' permission to use photos of children. Um, a formal letter receipt, including your tax ID number, provides a tax record for both parties and shows due diligence on the recipient's part. The IRS requires a receipt be sent for donations of $250 or more, but it is okay and a good practice to send receipts to all. Depending on the organization, donor appreciation events can be expensive and difficult for a small staff to plan. It really has to be an appropriate fit. I love the idea of a website stewardship page. This is where a donor spotlight could be presented. Of course, you need the donor's permission to use their name or photo, um, but you could talk to them about this during a personal visit. Speaking of personal visits, there is really nothing like face-to-face -face connections. One of our members was pleased when Chad and I arrived in person to do a training with their board on a Friday night recently versus seeing us on a computer screen. The response we get from members as well as donors when we take the time to visit them is very positive. Sharing the names of donors with staff allows them to know their donors and gives them a chance to say thank you when they run into these donors at the grocery store or along the way at a meeting and it feels good for both parties. Speaking of fit, communication fit, <clears throat> excuse me, applies to more than baby boomers appreciating phone calls while millennials prefer tweets. Details are very important and sending out generic materials to all of your donors is a mistake you don't want to make. Repeat donors or donors who are involved professionally should receive relevant, timely information on the work they are contributing to, not the work you are doing. First or second time donor relationships should be nurtured and developed. Walk the walk and honestly share information that may concern donors. And when donors do show concern over something, be sure to respond to them. It's respectful and it illustrates your gratitude in a significant, meaningful way. We're all in this together and I'm thankful that I don't need to do it all alone. Since there weren't too many of you willing to share, we are kind of down toward the end of this. I know it's early. Um, I appreciate your attendance and time today, and I appreciate the spirit of service we all share. I have included a link in this slide. Uh, it used to be Nonprofit with Balls, and he has now changed it to Nonprofit AF. And he is very funny, and his the reasons to be thankful for the nonprofit sector were really wonderful. I read that yesterday and wanted to share it. And um, if anybody has any questions or comments, please type them in the chat box, and Kieran, you can share them with us. We don't have any at this time, but I did also want to remind everyone that we will be sending out um, a recording of the presentation and the slides. Yes, and also, if any of you are members out there, 
Uh, we will be having a member mastermind on Tuesday, November 28th at 10 a.m. on moving your mission forward. An email will be sent out to members tomorrow with registration information. So, um, anything, Karen? Nope, nope. We just want to thank everybody for joining us today and wish you all a great Thanksgiving. Okay, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Oh, we do have one comment, who is isn't someone who says, I'm thankful for Wolfie. <laughs> <laughs> thank you back. Have a great day and a wonderful holiday. Happy thanks and giving. Take care. Thank you.